In version 10, the beam tool has been dramatically improved. So if I click on the beam tool, across the info box, we have obviously the beam tool there again, the layers and layer combinations, and the actual layer that the beam is going to sit on, and all the methods of placing the beam. We have the, just a single method, continuous, and double click to finish that off. Also, the rectangle and rotated rectangle. So I'm just going to undo these, go Apple Z, Apple Z, and rather than work along here again, I'm just going to open the main dialog box. First in the geometry and positioning part of the beam palette, we have the description of the beam and where it sits in 3D space. I'm just going to change to a straight rectangular profile and over here it's 150 deep and it's taken from the top down so it's actually dimensioned in a similar way to slabs are so it's 150 deep from the top it's 150 down to the, to the current project zero which is three meters so this story is three meters high and so the actual space between zero and the bottom of the beam should be 2850 and of course it's exactly the same, the absolute height, because we're just on story zero. And I'm going to leave this on automatic and move up to this section. Now over here in this section here we have two options. Previously we could only create square beams, but now we can also create special profiles or complex profiles. And once again we access that similar to the wall tool in that under structure we can use profiles here so there's a number of custom profiles already in there but I'm just going to leave that for a little bit later then we can see the width of the beam is 100 millimeters we can offset the center line and we can also rotate a beam so we'll do that a bit later and this isn't highlighted at the moment but we can also change the inclination of a beam which we couldn't do before as well. Now basically what defines a beam is that it's really a horizontal incl or inclined construction element and it's got vertical faces on the end. Um, so if we just move on through there I'm just going to leave that at level at this time and yep so then I'm just going to go to the floor plan and section over here once again we've gone over floor plan display in the in the wall section and the slab section so I'm just going to go straight to the structure over here profile this is the profile where we select the profile we're about to use and I've actually chosen this joist 76 by 127 but I've resized it in this dialog to 100 by 150 just to round it off we also have beam priority and once Again, we can see that the beam priority at the moment is on 7, and these are all odd numbers, as I've mentioned on the wall tool. On the wall tool movie, is that walls have even priorities, and beams have odd priorities. So, once you're happy with that, I'm going to collapse that. Cut surfaces. Now, the cut fill pen, and cut fill background, so if I chop through the beam, these are the pens that will come into play. And just to illustrate that, I'm going to open that section through the beams to show the orange pens. And there they are there. So if I go back to that, we can see the orange pen there and the grey pens and then the green pens as well. So I'll just get out of there. You can also apply the structures settings that were set up in the complex profiles dialog. So if I click that, we'll notice that those dialogs disappear. But if I go back to the complex profile, um, we can apply the structure settings that was applied in the complex profile manager. So once again, we're happy with all that. We move the outlines. Now there's a number of different ways we can display a beam in the floor plan area. First of all, overhead lines, we can actually have a hidden line or any any sort of line that we've got there. Overhead pen lines, so we can define that and the uncut pen lines as well. As far as the symbols, we can have beam end lines, so at the moment they're on both ends, 
we can only have one at the start, at the end, or none. Once again, just handy drafting aids. We can actually show a center line down the middle of the beam or not by checking that, obviously. And if we do check that, we have more options by defining the center line type and the center line pen. So once we've set all that, we can collapse that. Then we move to the model attribute. So this is the material that we give the beam in 3D. At the moment, we can only have access to this last parameter because we're on the complex profile mode. If I click on the regular profile, they all become available and we can edit each surface of the beam, all four sides and the ends. At the moment, beam is trimmed to one or more roofs is grayed out because we don't have any roofs on the floor plan, but we can trim to more than one roof now, which we weren't able to do before. Custom texture defined in 3D windows, so I don't have to worry about that now. Hole, we can also place holes in the beams. We can place square ones or round ones. We can put the diameter of the hole there. So if my beam's 150 deep, we can put a 100 mil hole in it and the position center line we better make that if the beams 150 make that 75 to the center line and we can designate how we want that shown in floor plan so I'm going to show it like that and collapse that and once again the listing and labeling which we're not going to go over right now and the lay that the beams going to be on so if I push OK we're ready to draw some beams. Over here are some beams that I prepared earlier and if I go to the 3D window now I'm just going to experiment a little bit with these beams. First of all I'm going to change the height of that to say 3050 so move it 50 mil up. Now if I have a close look at this at the moment this beam is running all the way through and this beam is running all the way through as well. Now they both have the same priority but if I open this beam tool and change the settings by changing the beam profile. If I move that up to 9 for example and I push OK, as soon as I do that if I select this beam we can see that it's been cut out and this one runs all the way through. If I swap it around or I reduce the priority of this beam back down to lower than 7, the opposite happens. Now this one's running all the way through and this one is now being cut. Now I can also manipulate these beams quite a bit in 3D. We have some very informative pet palettes that pop up as I manipulate or want to manipulate the beam. So on the center node, if I click on that node there, I can actually raise the inclination or lower it. And as soon as I do that, I let my mouse button go and click again, I've raised the inclination. But as soon as I do that, I've got a second button there which I can shorten or lengthen the beam. The first icon there, I can swing, swing it around, change the angle of the beam. Underneath I can also move it laterally up and down, rotate the whole thing on its own axis and I can mirror reverse it and do a bunch of other things. Now if I just go back there and go Control Z or Apple Z a couple of times. However if I left mouse click on the corner node of the beam a pet pellet comes up that has a top row that has a few variations. The first one is still lengthen or shorten the beam. The next icon or next button allows us to rotate the beam in 3D. This is new for version 10 also. I'm just going to go Control Z undo that. And we can also widen the beam in 3D there as well. So I'm just going to go Apple Z there or Control Z. The bottom row is all the same. We might even want to multiply the beam out. As soon as I do, I let my mouse button go on the multiply button to multiply palette comes up. And for example here I might spread the beam at 200 centers and drag copies of it out like that.
I might just go back to the floor plan and get rid of all these and push delete now I'm just going to combine a couple of the things that we've done to the beams and that we probably wouldn't have been able to do in previous versions of ARCHICAD so I might just click on the beam tool trim that back by holding down the apple key or control key and then move this by going apple D left mouse clicking on it moving it to the end there and then I'm going to put these beams on slight inclines so might make them 15 degrees then rotate each one of these beams 20 degrees this one can be 30 degrees this one can be minus 20 and this one can be minus 30 and then if I go to the 3D window that's what I, that's the effect that I wanted now I was just going to move that out using the smart guides now if I go to the 3D window now we can see how the intersections have worked properly and if I select one of those we can see that that's been cut as opposed to that beam hasn't been cut so it's treated all those connections fairly nicely so this would have been fairly difficult to do it in previous versions of ARCAD the only other thing I might do is put a couple of holes in the beams another way to illustrate how the beams have been cut properly is select this beam here and put it to a layer that has been activated in wireframe mode so as soon as I do that and I go to my 3D window we can see how these beams have been cut against the wireframe beam so it's a nice little feature so the other thing I might just grab that and put it back onto structural bearing layer so it's not in wireframe anymore now if I want to cut a hole through this beam I just select it and with my Mercedes cursor floating over the reference line it's a dark Mercedes cursor I'll left mouse click wait for the pet pelt to come up and I release my mouse button on this icon here which is add a hole now the beam hole settings come up now we set these in the in the beam dialog box before but we can also modify them here so we said that the position, the center position of the hole was going to be 75 millimeters and the size was going to be 100 millimeters so there's the hole there I might just place a couple of extra holes into this beam here push OK and I might put a square hole into this position here and the same technique works for inclined members as well so as I come up there I get the Mercedes cursor and might go back to the circular hole push OK once you've actually got a hole in there you can also grab the hole so only that hot spots selected not the, the two end ones and as I start moving it and I push the Apple and Alt key on the Mac or control and Alt on the PC the two little crosses come up and I can just drop holes all the way up the beam and the other technique you can use is place a hole there once you've placed it make sure you just grab that hot spot there and click on the pet pellet and use the multiply command so if I wanted to multiply some holes by spread them by 200 millimeters push OK and as I drag them out it will multiply the holes out the other thing you can do is still modify these members by using the pet pellet 
I don't want that pit pellet, it's remembered that because that's the last pellet I opened. So if I push cancel and click on the pet pellet for the actual tool that I want. So I want this one there and over here I can just change the physical appearance of those inclined beams. So now if I go to 3D we've got a very strange structure that would have been difficult in previous versions of ARCHICAD. And it also creates some very pleasing elevations as well. And even if I go through and drag the elevation marker through the building so it becomes a cross section, we can get some nice, very nice effects using these tools. It's probably worth noting that rather than drawing a 2D element in a section of elevation, it's far better to model everything in 3D including all your beams. We've got advanced tools to do this now and the obvious byproduct of this is that all our documentation can be coordinated so it's very simple to do all your sections and elevations and you just know all your drawings are going to be right if it's modeled correctly. In addition to all the beams that we can create using the beam tool, there are many more to be found in the ARCHICAD library. To access these, we double click on the object tool and if I press find library parts and type in beam and push the find button, we can see all the new beams that Graphsoft have developed. We have collar beams, the timber, timber type beams that go in your roof, angles, H-beams, Incline beams, joist beams, IPE beams, cold rolled steel beams, concrete precast beams, cold rolled beams, some curved beams, web beams, and some Z sections. All these beams are incredibly versatile. For example, if I click on this particular H beam, we can see that the regular sizes are in there, or standard sizes that most companies have are in there, and I can also click custom. Um, which is right down the bottom, it goes off the screen here. So we can put in any size we like. We can choose our insertion points, either from the top, center or bottom. Now as for cut planes, we have a new interface for this. So I'm just going to collapse parameters and go to the cutting planes interface. Now over here we can change the rotation axis of the beam. So it's along the axis or along the cross section. Insertion point we can change here also. We can put the rotation angle here and we can see a very clear little diagram here. The cut planes when they're turned on or off, we can turn them on or off from here as well, as well as in the parameters dialog box. And we can actually cut it per perpendicular to the axis, along the vertical axis, or, or along the horizontal axis. The cut type here on the high end of the beam can be either along the vertical axis and along the horizontal axis also. Now the cutting angles, we can just define the cutting angles in here, or if we want to, we can place the beam in the floor plan and we can grab any of these by the hot spots and we can type in the angle in the tracker pallet once again, but I can use the guides. For example, if I wanted to cut that at a 60 degree pitch, um, if I select this hot spot and I wanted to maybe make that at minus 45 degrees. So we've got a very flexible tool with the beams now and on top of that the different beams have different parameters for example the unequal angle beams the flange can be on the top or the bottom with the precast beam I can actually choose it to be straight or inclined and and when I click the incline I can have it inclined one way or two ways in the section dimensions I can actually choose the width of the flanges top and bottom web thickness, all sorts of other parameters. So with all these new beams in the ARCHICAD library and all the new added functionality in the beam tool, there we should be able to model just about any beam that we like to help create a very accurate model.